Writing Freedom is a great book about a girl named Charlotte who runs away from the orphanage in the mid-1800s. She knows she can't survive out on be her own being a girl, so she disguises herself by cutting her hair and dressing like a boy. She calls herself Charlie and finds a job at a sta stable that is owned by a very kind man named Ebenezer. He trains Charlie to become a stagecoach driver. This scene is from the middle of the book when Charlie discovers that evil Mr. Milshock, the owner of the orphanage, is going to be one of, one of her passengers on the stagecoach ride. She is very worried that he will recognize her. The actors in the scene is myself as Ebenezer, Tony as Charlotte, Suck Jin as Mr. Milkshop, Greg as Narrator 1, and Kevin as Narrator 2. It was a busy morning filled with lots of activities at the horse stable in Providence, Rhode Island. Passengers were preparing to travel. Packages were being mailed and shop boxes were being lifted onto the sta stage court from the back. Charlie was busy with the routine of taking care of the horses. All of the workers and passengers didn't complain about anything that he did because they believed that they would be riding with the best. It was almost time for the stagecoach to leave. Ebenezer, the owner of the stable, handed a list of passengers to Charlie. I can't believe it. Could it be the same Mr. Milshark, the owner of the orphanage, who was so mean to me? You look like you've seen a ghost. I, I don't think I can drive today. What are you blabbering about? The mail's got to go through, same as them passengers. Abbott and Lisa was wondering if that could really be the same man from the orphanage who had come by the stable looking for a girl that he had run away some years ago. Now listen, don't you pay them passengers no mind. You are what you are, and what you are is a fine horseman, and the best coachman I ever saw. You remember that. Under the circumstances, there ain't nothing left for you to do but your job. So get to it. You're, you're the coachman. You're in charge, so roll them up. All aboard. Finally it came. Okay. Charlie seated the woman first and put them by the window. Those were the best seats. Then she put on her ch children. Do you have a seat for me, the man? You can squeeze in the middle bench with them children. Could I persuade you with a few fine cigars? Because to let me sit up top since I'm just going to the next town? Charlie knew what the answer and to be seen a good friend would never refuse some good cigars. Uh, uh certainly. Thank you. It will be a present all right for sure. heading down the dusty road. Charlie knew every twist in the road. The passengers were being tossed about in the coach and Mr. Mercer and Charlie endured the uncomfortable horror bench on the top. Going a little fast, aren't you? I know my horses by heart and I'm not the one for bad driving, so hold on tight. You're the boss! Gideon. Charlie loved the thrill of being caught of Mr. Milkshark because it was like good old fashioned revenge. When Charlie looked at Mr. Milkshark, he seemed really frightened. He was hanging on the railing for a dear life. She knew where there was a huge mud puddle and she purposely ran the stagecoach right into the mud. Splash! Well, it looks like we're stuck. Would you mind getting to the back wheel and giving us a little push? Oh, 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 okay, sure. I'll help you, whatever you say. Take, best take off my boots. 
as they were really expensive and I don't want them to get dirty. So, I have to go back. Mr. Mixer, brand new ex expensive boots were. 